Okay, well, one of the other things um, I somehow decided was an absolute essential part of my new <laughs> home was getting a weather station. Uh, it might be that we, we have some interesting new clients recently in this space, but um, I, I've never really thought about weather being interesting, but now I'm obsessed with it. And part <laughs> of the reason is with this um, handy dandy internet connected um, weather station from Accurite that um, I think was just about $135, pretty reasonable price, um, and you can get it cheaper elsewhere, um, both at Lowe's and I think online too. Um, but what it consists of is the main unit, the kind of the white thing you see there. Um, it's got a little solar panel on, which isn't actually for charging. It does have batteries in it, but it's to keep, um, there's a little fan inside of there to mm -hmm. keep the, the temperature accurate, even when the sun is, is kind mm -hmm. of shining on it. It has a weather sensor, humidity, um, rainometer, so you can see exactly how much rain we've had here in Seattle, which is usually a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the nice thing is, uh, is that you've got both a unit that uh, shows in your home what the current temperature is from the station, or you can connect it to the internet. So let's have a look at um, the web view of this. And this is a real-time view of my weather station my in my garden. Weather. Yes, wow. I know. <laughs> This is so exciting. Look at it. <laughs> the bar barometric pressure right now is 29 in Higgs, whatever that is. I'm not sure what that is. But, um, uh, so it gives you both a snapshot, I think updated every five minutes or so, of what the current um, situation is, as well as uh, if you click, or you see here on one of the charts, if we pick one, like barometric pressure, you can see it's been increasing or mm. decreasing mm. through the day. Um, and uh, the, these are the five kind of key sensor, sensors that give you uh, these, these kind of interesting insights and views. So does it say all of this data is telling you it's going to rain? Or I have no you, idea. I have no <laughs> idea. What the, to, like, figure that out yourself. Well, you know, actually, that's that brings up a good point. So I actually this this view is a little clunky, to be perfectly honest, and and. There's a, there's a little bit of setup required, just putting in the MAC address of the, of the, the base station. Mm -hmm. So it's not for the complete, um, uh, somebody who's not got a little bit of technical savviness. Mm -hmm. But if you click on the next tab, what we can see is um, I can broadcast this information to the Weather Underground. This is really a, uh, a whole bunch of different oh, wow. people who have their oh, own okay. weather stations. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, the benefit to you is you get a very personalized forecast. So this forecast is based on my weather station and the, you know, the microclimates mm. within my uh, environment. Wow. So kind of handy and a much, a much uh, prettier uh, uh, kind of user interface here. A lot of different information that's very helpful. Um, and, uh, you know, I've used it when, um, the, the other nice thing is you can set up alerts. So um, I like to sail every now and again. And I typically like the weather, the wind to be in like mm -hmm. 10 miles an hour range. So um, I can set that, uh, that kind of threshold and then get an alert when it's going to be windy enough to sail. Um, or you could do a similar thing if, uh, you know, you were worried, you know, if, if whether when it was going to rain, you could get an alert based upon that. Mm. So this, uh, it's, it's an interesting addition. Some people are connecting them up to their home thermostats, uh, like the Nest. So um, this kind of, you, you can imagine, uh, you know, as pressure's dropping, turn up the thermostat or the temperature's dropping. Um, so you really can take it as geeky mm. as you want to. But... Uh, for, for 140 bucks, I think it's a really interesting uh, kind of little uh, toy to play with. And uh, I, I can already think of a few folks who would like this for the holidays. So that's one of my gifts I'm thinking of. Mm, yeah, because I was going to ask you, what kind of consumer do you think they had this in mind? Was it like someone who is more on a farm or they're living out at sea or something like that so they can always see the weather? Or do you think they're trying to get it more towards an everyday consumer? You know, I think at this price point, it's probably more the hobbyist. Mm. Um, uh, there are a lot of very expensive uh, weather stations out there in like the $800 or $1,000 oh, plus wow. range uh, that have even more sensors, more detail. Mm. Probably for if you were a fisherman or a, you know, a farmer, you probably would invest in something a little bit mm -hmm. more robust. But um, I think this is probably targeted more towards the consumer market. Okay. Um, I noticed a lot of retirees love to just check the weather and see what's going on. So. Are you getting to that stage now? Not quite yet. No, if I do, then please pull the plug. Right? Yeah. 
So yeah, that, it, we're, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this uh, particular technology and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll keep, keep an eye on the weather and my home through, the, through my drop cam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
you know, you don't have to if you don't want to. <laughs> Not a shameless promotion. <laughs> but you're also collecting for... Um, oh, yeah, I'm building a PC so I could yeah. do this. I could play there Minecraft like him as well as get a green screen and everything like that. So Great. So, yeah. We'll go and donate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for showing us. Excellent. Yeah, of course. Hi, I'm Jessica, and I'm going to introduce you to an app. Actually, it's a Google plugin called Assistant 2. Hmm. And um, did you know, on average, it takes about <laughs> 12 minutes to schedule a meeting with somebody with all the back and forth emailing oh, on, wow. are you free here? I can and it. I'm free here. Yeah, it's a pain. So, this is supposed to solve that, mm -hmm. and it takes about 30 seconds to schedule a meeting now, um, a one on one meeting with somebody. So, again, it's called Assistant 2. Uh, if we go down, I'll show you the features in their nifty little tour. And actually, I was introduced to this today um, with somebody trying to schedule a meeting with me, and I just had this amazingly delightful moment of clicking a link in the email, and it scheduled a meeting for both of us. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. Super simple. So, it, like I said, it's a Google plugin, um, and you can see at the bottom of the email there, it's, um, it gives you an easy way to, to schedule a meeting, and I'll show you, I'll take you through that later. Um, so, go ahead and click step two. Uh, it takes you from the, the email plugin to the calendar and it allows you to pick available times that might be um, convenient for that meeting. Mm -hmm. Go to step three and it pulls those meeting times into your email nice. and you can see with the links um, when you send this email off to your, the person you're trying to meet with, they can just click a link and it's as simple as that for um, the time that works for them. So go ahead awesome. and click done. It sends notifications to the both of you once the meeting's been scheduled. So let's go into my email and we'll see it work. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and compose an, an email. I'll um, try to schedule a meeting with you, Adam. Mm -hmm. so. I'm very busy. It'll be very <laughs> difficult. <laughs> so click the, the person and down at the bottom you see the plugin. Um, if you click the length of the meeting, you can see, so over on the left there, yeah. you can see it kind of helps you pre-fill um, a time. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, let's do a 30 minute meeting. Right. Uh, the location is the 8 9 studio and as you schedule more and more meetings it gets smarter about um, filling in this for you. Oh that's awesome. So I've only used it a couple times and I've only scheduled in the 8 9 studio so that's all they have in the pre-fill. Mm. Right. But let's go ahead and select times now. It's going to take me out to the calendar. You can see um, this. these are available times to meet so I can change those those available times. And this is just your calendar. It's not pulling from my free busy. It's, not yet. Yeah, it's only okay. reading my calendar. And then I'm proposing to that person. This is when I'm free. Got it. So, so in this case, I'm the organizer. And I as see. the organizer, it only works um, in Gmail. Mm -hmm. and you have to go into the Gmail web client to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think they have. I think they've worked on a solution for Outlook, mm -hmm. but it sounds mm -hmm. like that's a. If you use Outlook, click here and we can teach you some more stuff. So oh, okay. I haven't tried it yet, but it sounds like it's not as integrated as deeply. Got it. Um, so you can see it pulled those times into the email, um, and if I send this off to Adam, go ahead and click send. Like I said, he gets the email and he can just click works for me. Um, and once he clicks works for me, I'll get a notification that says Adam's accepted this meeting. It goes onto my calendar, it goes onto Adam's calendar, and it's as simple as that. That sounds That's super really helpful. awesome. Yeah. And it even really says, helpful. you know, the name of the meeting, where we're meeting, and it might be why and the meeting name, and also all the times that would be best mm -hmm. instead of having to say, like, um, are you free this day? No, I'm not. Right. I have a meeting at this time, and the back and forth. Do you think people, uh, will understand it. You know, I'm just, you know, I'm just thinking, you know, people are so used to, to the traditional way of getting a meeting invite. It might be one of these things where people's like, oh no, I've, I've got to like learn another service right. or something like that. You know, uh, I think for me, I'm okay with trying out new, yeah. new services. And so when I received this for the first time today, it said in there, it's from Assistant 2. Right. Mm -hmm. I knew it was probably a new application. Yeah. I was okay trying it. Right. And so, Maybe there's a barrier for that first click, mm -hmm. but once I clicked it, it you was it. instantaneous, yeah. and I liked it. And so, um, so it'll be interesting to see. We you can should tell try it. We should definitely try it. I, yeah. think, I think they market yeah. it to um, founders of new companies, mm -hmm. 
So it sounds like they're trying to hit the startup y mm -hmm. space first and then see if it grows out from there. I think what lessens the barrier is that it's not like getting a Google invite or an Outlook invite mm -hmm. where there's a ton of information. It's it's an email that looks like it's coming directly from that person and it also just has a link that, you know, it has a time and then you can just say works for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that kind of helps with that. And and it will show up on your Outlook or your um, Apple calendar just fine, right? Correct. It creates a entry and yeah, just the organizer is constrained yeah. to using Gmail, but everybody else can, they, mm. the receiver can use any. How about yeah, if you need to modify it? Do you need to go through this system again, or we, you could just you kind could, of move it on the, your regular calendar and just send it as an update? You, you, when you're modifying, you go to your calendar. Yeah. You don't have oh, to go okay. back through Assistant, too. That's Great. good. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have to try it. Yeah. It looks pretty cool. <laughs>